Hi everyone. Welcome to the Christ the King sermon webcast. I'm Pastor Matt, pastor at Christ the King in Westchester, Ohio, and I'm glad you could join me today. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for this time of Advent, a time for us to pause and to prepare for the coming of Christ. We ask that you would open our hearts and minds and remember, remind us that your Son Jesus came to free us from the things to which we are bound. Bless all who hear these words. Pour out your Spirit upon them that they may hear the truth of who your Son is in their lives. All this we ask in your Son Jesus' name. Amen. Our first reading for our Advent series comes from Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 4. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn to provide for all who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities the devastations of many generations. Psalm 105, verses 7 through 22. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He is mindful of his covenant forever, of the word that he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant that he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statute to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, To you I will give the land of Canaan as your portion for an inheritance. When they were few in number, of little account, and strangers in it, wandering from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people, he allowed no one to oppress them. He rebuked kings on their account, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. When he summoned famine against the land and broke every staff of bread, he had sent a man ahead of them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. His feet were hurt with fetters, his neck was put in a collar of iron, until what he said came to pass. The word of the Lord kept testing him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the peoples set him free. He made him the lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions to instruct his officials at his pleasure and to teach his elders wisdom. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25 through chapter 5, verse 2. So then, Putting away all falsehood, let us speak of the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing rather than let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouth, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit, which with you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger, wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. 
The Holy Gospel according to Luke, chapter 4, verses 16 through 21. When Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. Then the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who comes to free those of us who are captive. Amen. I want you to think about things which bind you, things which keep you bound where you are, whether it is a fear that you may have or a worry or whether it is a relationship that you are you engage in there are things that bind us together which are good there there are things which keep us uh, together with people we are bound together in love with families this last thursday having been thanksgiving there are certainly some fam family members that we are bound more closely to than others or some family members we regret being bound to. But Jesus comes to release everyone who is bound, everyone who is captive, willingly or unwillingly. If you don't believe me about the unwillingly, just take a walk around. Go to the supermarket, stand in the checkout aisle, go to any other place that you need to go, like a coffee shop and you will see people will be bound by their cell phones they ring and people salivate like pavlov's dog wanting to see who has text texted them last night during worship service or saturday evening worship service i actually got a text and it was from my mother it just so happened that i pulled out my cell phone as a sermon illustration and there was the text right there talking about something menial but we become bound up by our technology. If the internet goes down, we feel helpless. And yet, 25 years ago, the internet wasn't really so pervasive in our lives. Think about all of those things which keep us bound in our own understanding, in our inability to open our hearts and minds to see other people. We bind ourselves tribally in our identity, which is political. We refuse to open our eyes and our hearts to see who and what Jesus is in the world because we don't want to be challenged. We want to be safe. And yet this is exactly what Jesus does. Jesus comes into the world to challenge us. Today is the first Sunday in Advent. Advent for those who do not come from a liturgical background, Advent is the time that leads up to Christmas. Now, there are a lot of people who believe that Christmas begins on December 1st. There are people who've been waiting to put their decorations up since the day after Halloween. But Advent is one of the two penitential seasons in the church. Advent being the first, which is the four weeks leading up to Christmas, and then it is Lent, which is six weeks leading up to Easter. Those are times when we are supposed to sit down and focus on our relationship with God. They're called penitential because we are supposed to focus on the things that we may have done wrong. The reason why Christ came to die on the cross and rise again is because of our sin. And Christ comes in love to do that. So this Advent season, 
At Christ the King, we are looking at all of the different songs of freedom that we receive in the Gospel of Luke and in the book of Isaiah. Jesus enters into a synagogue, and people have a bound-up idea of who he is going to be, and he pulls down the scroll and reads this song of freedom from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The people in the synagogue don't like what Jesus has said because Jesus then says, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. They know Jesus. They've seen him grow up. It's his hometown. They remember him when he was a little ankle biter running around his stepfather Joseph's shop. They don't like what he has to say at all. I mean, they know his reputation. They are bound up by their own understanding of who Jesus is and their expectations of him. So if you really are who you say you are, Jesus, they tell him, do some miracles for us. And Jesus says, a prophet is never, ever welcome in his hometown. Our own bound-up understanding of who Jesus is and of this time of the year gets rather confused. We don't understand the true meaning of what Advent is all about, of waiting for Christ to come. Christ originally came, God incarnate, to show us the love of God, a God who pursued us and pursues us, who wants us to understand that our sin is forgiven through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And this is not a gift. It's not something that we do. It's not about our goodness. It's about God's goodness through Jesus Christ. But we lose sight of what that means. We are so bound up in our understanding of who we should be in the world, we forget about God's place and about who Jesus calls us to be in the world. This last Thursday, we sat down for a meal all together as a family, and we gave thanks to God for the abundance that we have received. I think it's interesting that nationally we have this holiday set aside to thank God for the abundance that we have been given. And yet we can't even wait for dinner to finish before the Black Friday sales and ads are on. It keeps creeping earlier and earlier in. We sit down and say, thank you so much for everything you have given us, God. And then we are told we don't have enough or we're going to miss out. So get out and buy, buy, buy. And then our understanding of how Christmas can be celebrated is all about things. It's about buying enough stuff to put under the Christmas tree so that we can make sure that everybody has a happy and wonderful Christmas filled with joy. And yet it's not those things. Christ comes to unbind us from our own materialism, from our own understanding that our creature comforts help us to be more comfortable. That by buying things we can be more secure, when the truth is nothing that we own will ever make us secure, nothing that we buy or do, even if we are told that we need to help the economy by buying and buying and buying, we are bound up in our own human understanding of how the world works. We can, if we focus on Christ, remember that he has come to free us from all the things we are bound to, especially our bondage to sin and our fear of death. This is truly what Christ's coming and truly why we observe Advent for four weeks and then celebrate Christmas. Because Christ comes to show us love, to free us from ourselves our own stupidity, our own sinfulness. Again and again and again, we are reminded 
that we are forgiven and that we are loved and God continues to pursue us. And Advent is a time to be humble and to be thankful as we focus on the one who has freed us, who declares to us God's favor, who gives sight to the blind, shares good news with the poor, and releases the captives, including all of us who are captive to sin. Thanks be to God. Amen. And may the peace which passes all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you and grant you peace. Amen. That's it for this week. I wish you a blessed Advent observance. You're welcome to look at our website to find out the mission and ministry that we do at Christ the King and the opportunities to come and observe Advent with us. The link to our website will be in the comments. I will see you next week.